Not the best. I can't do it with the. Hold on, hold on. Got the, huh? There we go. I can do it without the belt and the and the slippers on, but. All right. Hello there. I'm Scotty. Of course, you are not. And welcome back to the wrestling corner. That's not in the corner anymore. We are looking at WWE SmackDown from October 31st, 2002. This is the Halloween episode of SmackDown. This is the one everyone remembers, right? And now I'll be honest. This was actually pretty good, going back and watching this. I remember, I think I watched this. I think this was around the time I started watching it. Uh, when I was in high school, I, uh, I mentioned, I think I mentioned this before, but I was into WCW back in the day, and then the finger poke of doom happened and everything. We stopped watching it. Not my choice, of course. It was my, my folks' choice at the time. Um, and we watched the last episode of Nitro, and then still nothing. Then I got to high school, and I met a friend of mine named Juan. Well, I haven't seen in a very long time. I hope he's doing well. But, uh, it's 20 years. It's hit me. It's 20 years since I've seen him, man. He graduated in 2003, so. Yeah. Anyway, he got me back into wrestling, talking about, you know, so what's going on. And everything, and so I started watching it. You know, I would record it with some of the SmackDown because they would air on UPN, and then I had some kind of a deal where it was like connected to CBS, so it would air like midnight on CBS. So I put a videotape in the VCR, record the minute one because we didn't always have cable at the time. I think, although I, at this point, I think I did, we did have cable. Eventually, I had to start recording the midnight shows because we lost it. But I do remember a lot of stuff from this episode, and into it so uh halloween party main event party supposed to be main event announcement anyway we start with stuff at a halloween party and the first thing we see is farouk dressed as a pimp yelling at some woman you gotta give me my money i asked for my money and i'm just like this is how we start the smackdown you'll be able to do it nowadays and there's a lot of things on this show that i'm thinking we don't get nowadays like certain it's more realistic, a lot of stuff. They say the word hospital instead of local medical facility. Nowadays, everything is overproduced. Everything has to be fakealized, which means everything has to be hidden from everyone. No realism at all. Can't show blood. You know, you have to, like, for instance, last night during the last man standing match, there's a moment where uh, Nakamura knocks Seth Rollins down onto an obvious pad, but the the announcers go, he knocked Rollins all the way down to the floor, even though us people at home could clearly hear him hitting the pad, and the people there would be able to figure that out too. And you could see the obvious pad behind him, and know that he obviously rolled off it. They go way too much into protecting their superstars nowadays. It's not realistic enough. Back here though, it was realistic. Even the announce the, the, the announcers, the commentators, were more, more realistic in their descriptions of what was going on instead of today, you know? Because that, that this was the ruthless aggression era, right? This was between Attitude and PG. Once everything hit PG, to a certain point in the early times of the PG era, it was fine. Then they started getting overproduced with everything. Even, look at the product placements here. In between matches, they announced, oh, SmackDown was brought to you by Xbox, and, and this, and this. And then they have a little thing at the bottom of the screen. Nowadays, the entire fucking uh, the, uh, ring apron and the, uh, the guardrail all covered in LED lights with the promotion. No, it's too overproduced. Too overproduced. Going back and watch something like this makes me wish they could go back to something like this. But I know it never happened. Everything is too overproduced nowadays. But anyway, we got a Halloween party. Everyone's dressed up. Uh, from the top of my head, Billy Kidman is the Phantom of the Opera. 
Eddie Guerrero is a Zorro. Uh, Chavo Guerrero is a Mexican guy with a sombrero and a sarape. Uh, Tajiri is a disco dude. Um, Mae Young is there. Fabulous Mula. Mae Young is dressed as um, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, what, who else? Uh, Chuck Palumbo is a Native American, which is kind of racist because I don't think he's Native American. He might have some blood in him, I guess, but I don't know. We couldn't get away with that nowadays, I don't think. Um, i trying to think. John Cena is, of course, but no, Ice will get to that later. But Stephanie McMahon comes out and announces that the main event for SmackDown tonight will be Rey Mysterio versus Brock Lesnar, the WWE champion, which I have right here. Uh, so, yes, this WWE championship. I, lo I love this design. The World of Tiles is probably my favorite, but this, because this was the WWE championship I grew up with. When they turned into that spinner belt, I was like, Okay, it's only for John Cena, you know, and they did hint at it, like, with JBL saying when he wins it back, he's going to go into this. And even uh, when uh, John Cena went to Raw and was having this program with Kurt Angle, Angle was carrying around this saying, this is going to go back to this when he won, but of course, it never did. And then every single superstar after that would just carry the spinner belt, which I would say Triple H and CM Punk, besides John Cena, Triple H and CM Punk looked the best with it. Maybe even Randy Orton. But, I don't know. It's hard to make that belt look good on anyone else than John Cena. But those two look all right. You know. I mean, Randy did put it around his waist. He put it on his shoulder like this. So that helped. Triple H did kind of make it look good. The Miz had an upside down M. An upside down W on it, like an M. But, you know. Anyway, back to this. So our first match of the night is Edge versus Chris. Don't say my name on TV, Benoit. And, uh... Yeah, this, this was a pretty good match with an ending that is obvious at this point in time. So the whole thing here is that, so if you don't know, Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle are the tag team champs. The first ever WWE tag team champions for the SmackDown brand. This, this, there's the World Tag Team Championships on Raw, but these are the WWE Tag Team Championships. First ever champions, these two. They were forced to uh, work together in a tournament, and they still don't get along. And that plays into this edge, and Benoit have a great match, good back and forths at one point. Benoit has the cross face, and Kurt Angle comes out. So Benoit gets in his face. They're arguing, and Edge, you know, gets in there, hits the spear. One, two, three. Benoit loses. This does come back. It does come back. But, uh, yeah. Uh, we have also have advertised a trick-or-treat match between Tori Wilson and Don Marine. If you watch SmackDown, at this point in time, that's probably the only women's match you're going to get is Troy Wilson versus Don Marie because that, besides eventually Shaniqua, I think they were the only women, women, on the SmackDown roster. At one point, they did have, like, a couple others, but there was a thing after the draft where everyone, some people were jumping, which is why Brock Lesnar and Matt Hardy and the Big Show were all on here and not there. Uh, on here in SmackDown, now, which... Did even up the roster, I guess. And Christian was on SmackDown. He jumped back to Raw. And uh, Lance Storm as well went to Raw. You know. I think William Regal was on SmackDown too. But I know he was on Raw. I don't know. But yeah. Um, that thing where you could jump where we want. You know. Because I guess they, they did this. And then they realized, ah, they were going to change it. I guess. But. So, we go back to the party after this. And... Uh, <clears throat> And uh, John Cena does his first rap, you know. You know, stop, collaborate, and listen. Ice is back with a brand new convention. And he does this whole spiel, this whole rap thing to this person. Who, I don't know who this person is that he's doing it to, but that was the first time. There's a man that's in the back going, he may have something here. Yeah. And then I have him do it again later, another rap to Stephanie. And she's very confused the way he just said, but we'll get to that later. That's... One of the most memorable parts of this is this, and then the later part, because that lead, you know. Um, yeah, and then, oh, this is, I think this is where we see uh, Tajiri, he's all, you know, he's a disco dude, and then Tori was with, oh, Tori! Because, you know, they just date, you know. If you don't know, they used to be a thing. Uh, I think when they were both part of the Alliance, they used to date, or whatever. But now he's like, she has that trick-or-treat match, or whatever. And so he goes, out. Oh, 
Tor, uh, uh, Don Marie comes in with Tori Wilson's dad, Al Wilson. That's a story that I don't want to get into <laughs> right now. But he's dressed as Fonzie. He even goes, E. You know. And then uh, Tajiri goes up to this Marilyn Monroe and it's revealed to be. <laughs> it's revealed to be Mae Young. He's like, oh, hey, baby. And she turns around and he's like, oh. Uh, then Chris Benoit comes in looking for Kurt Angle. He's going over. Angle! Angle, where are you? Angle! And there's this guy dressed in a skull. It's like Scream, but not really. It's, you've seen, uh, if you've seen the um, Fear Street 1994, it's like that. It's a skeleton thing with a hood, cloak, cowl thing, and he's got the mask. And then he's going, Angle, Angle, he's going by, and he takes the mask off, and it's Angle. And he just sort of smiles. And not talk in the hallway, please. Thank you. <clears throat> if they're going to talk in the hallway, can they just whisper? They know the hallway fucking echoes. And they'd still keep talking in normal volume. Anyway. We got to the... To the, um... To the locker room where Paul Hammond is talking to Brock Lesnar. And guys... If you don't know where this goes, you watch this back knowing where this goes. Knowing where the Brock Lesnar Big Show match at Survivor Series goes. You are saying things. You have Paul Heyman talking to Brock Lesnar. Now, something I noticed last night, Paul Heyman's hair is white as snow, man. He's... Dye your hair, man. What? I'm going to dye mine once it starts getting gray and white, but he's just all... But here, he's still got his little bald spot ponytail combo that he got going on. Uh, which I used to think was a choice, and I realized, no, he's actually going bald. It's not. <laughs> I was a stupid kid, okay? Or teenager, whatever. Um, but yeah, and so he warns Brock Lesnar, he goes, Big Show is a big guy, right? You can't lift the Big Show. You can't uh, F5 the Big Show, which means you can't beat the Big Show. It's a, it's a big warning thing. And to show, you know, Paul Heyman's point, the next match is Big Show versus Rikishi, which is a match that's just okay, but it's just there to show you what Big Show can do because the commentators keep pointing out that Rikishi's 350 pounds, go, he's 350 pounds. Now, 350-pound Rikishi, and they, you know, they do it. the turnbuckle is exposed at some point. I missed when that happened, but Rikishi gets... Uh, Irish whipped, back hits it, and then Big Show picks him up, hits a body slam, then picks him up, four choke slam, boom, one, two, three, and he gets on the microphone, he's like, Lesnar, Lesnar, I want you to come out here, and then we cut to the back with Lesnar going in there and uh, coming to the ring, but um, Paul Heyman stops and saying, no, don't do it, don't do it, and then we cut to commercial, we come back, and, let, and, and, you know, Big Show's like, SmackDown will not continue until I get Rock Lesnar or something like that. And he's like, well, you know, I've been advised not to do anything to you tonight. And that is the phrase. He's been advised. Now, who, 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 who do you think advised him? Hmm? Hmm? Again, watching this in hindsight. If you don't know, I'm going to spoil Survivor Series 2002 for you right now. So if you haven't seen it, or you are watching, or you are currently going through the episodes of SmackDown, and haven't gotten to that yet, you know, you're going through the W Network, or Peacock, and you're going through each episode, and each pay-per-view, if you haven't got to that yet, please, uh, fast forward until I don't have the WWE Championship on my shoulder anymore, and then we'll go back. And then we come back and we'll talk, okay? So, uh, at Survivor Series, Paul Heyman turns on Brock Lesnar and the Big Show becomes WWE Champion. This is the beginning of Brock Lesnar's face turn, Big Show's big heel turn, and it works. It works. Uh, very well to get Brock Lesnar in the face. It wouldn't last long, but yeah, okay. Put it down. Uh, but Big Show here is they show footage of Big Show attacking the Undertaker, and the Undertaker wouldn't be back until the 2003 Royal Rumble. He would show up, go after Big Show, 
which would lead to a handicap match between him versus Big Show and Albert. Supposed to be a tag match, but Nathan Jones wasn't ready. But, um, yeah. This is all just a show. Then we have something they would not do now. Trigger treat match between Tori Wilson and Don Marie. Like I said, we're like the only women on the show at this point because they focus the women's division on Raw. So we have to have some kind of women's match. So it's always Tori Wilson and Don Marie. So we're going to have this match. And there are, it's not a regular match because that's, the, that's not what, what they let the women do at this time. But something I got to mention, Michael Cole, this is Michael Cole on commentary, not Taz. Michael Cole says, you know, Taz, falls count anywhere, even on the announce table. And I went, Michael Cole, you horny bastard. Yeah, he's still married at this point. But yeah, they're like hitting each other with like cake or pie or something and and at one point, the referee gets knocked into the thing, too. But, like, there's, like, this big vat of chocolate milk or something that's rolling around in. And then Tori Wilson wins the match. It's nothing really real home about, but it's something I would tell you if, you know, you want to just watch it. If, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was interesting to watch, but it's something they would not do nowadays. Let me tell you, just would not. So we go back to the party. And Matt Hardy version one comes in with a boombox playing his. He's like this. He's like, there's a party, right? And all of a sudden you hear, oh, 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 yeah. And he comes in. I'm going to inject this party with a dose of Mattitude. And you know, I, I liked the, the Matt Hardy version one stuff they used to do. Whenever his entrance would come up, it pop up. I didn't see what, his, what it said in his entrance. I wasn't paying attention. A little fact would pop up, you know. And then that's when Tajiri walks by. He's like, Tajiri, you and I have a match tonight. You have a match with Matt Hardy version one tonight. And you're back here going around with these hussies. And Mae Young's like, hey, you stay away from my boyfriend. I'm like. And then she kisses Tajiri. And the look on Tajiri's face, like a good luck kiss. The look on his face was just, he, he's like... <laughs> like, like you can't believe what just happened. So we have this match. This was a pretty good match. Lots of back and forth, back and forth. Excuse me. Uh, at one point, uh, Tajiri went through the bus saw kick. Matt Hardy reversed it, hit a side effect. No, he hit the twist of fate, and that's how the finish went. But there was a side effect, and I thought, oh, is that it? No, because they did the thing. Because Jerry is supposed to be in a spot, right? And this is a little bit of watch. He hits the side effect that Jerry rolls over closer to where he was supposed to be. And they kind of call on commentary. Like, roll and trying to be smart, but it doesn't roll anywhere near the ropes or anything. He just rolls over to a spot where it's supposed to be for the next <clears throat> thing, I guess. Uh, but yeah, bus sock kick, miss, duck out of the way, side, uh, twist of fate, one, two, three. But it was a very good match. Go back and watch this. It's pretty good. Not the best match, but we'll get to it. Um, next... Oh, that's right. During the party thing, oh, there's another one. Between before the match, there was another one. I forgot to mention. Yeah, the Los Guerreros come up and ask Te Stephanie for a tag title match, and then um, this is when John Cena shows up, starts rapping, and she goes, "What was that all about?" She goes, "Your dad is is in his office waiting. Is in your office waiting for you, my dad." Your dad, Vince McMahon, is in your office. He wants to talk to you. And so then we go to the match. And then we go back to Stephanie and Vince McMahon. Because this is the one of the most infamous things on this show. Is that Stephanie goes back and there's someone, just like Vince McMahon, back there. Ha, 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 Stephanie. Uh, one thing I meant to mention is on commentary, in the first match, most of all, is that they talk about Scott Steiner has come to the WWE and he's a free agent. Which brand is going to get him? And I like how they just... They should do this with Jay Cargill. They should do this with Jay Cargill and have her go from brand to brand and try to figure out where she's going to go. I think she's going to end up on SmackDown, but rumors are saying she's going to Raw. No. No. Everybody is going to Raw. Raw has too much. 
Raw has too much. And you may say, well, Raw is a three-hour show. Not by next year it won't be. Because it's leaving the USA Network and it's rumored that SmackDown is going to get the three-hour spot. And wherever Raw goes, it might go back to being two hours. I don't know. But I feel like SmackDown needs some women on their roster. Raw has a good women's roster. If they got rid of those goddamn women's tag team titles that nobody cares about... You could put some women, Shayna Baszler, Piper Niven, um, even Chelsea Green. You could put women in singles feuds and have them go for the titles. But because you insist on keeping those women's tag team titles, you have to, you know, Sh Shayna Baszler should have been women's champion three times over now on the main roster, but they keep on throwing her in the tag team title division for no fucking reason. And they've done it again. They've done it again. You know, because... And Zoe Stark is another one. You know, the Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler feud should be for a title. You know, I, I don't want to keep going off on this, but... Get, those tag team titles are, are cursed anyway. So get rid of them. They're not needed. Anyway, so Stephanie goes into the office, the guy dressed as Vince McMahon. How did I even get on that? <laughs> How did I ever get on that from that? But no, he goes into, he goes into the office and he says, oh, hi, hey, Vince. Oh, oh, Scott Steiner, that's right. Oh, I hear Scott Steiner is going to sign with Raw. And she goes, oh, really? Vince, how do you know that? And then he takes the mask off, it's Eric Bischoff, because I'm the man who's going to sign him. And they have a little tete-a-tete, -tete, and she goes to smack him, he grabs her hand, and then kisses her, and she's fighting it off, and then it gradually goes into, uh, you know, she's liking this now, and then they both have confused looks on their faces as she walks as he walks away, and the look on Stephanie McMahon's face is like, what the hell just happened, you know? Triple H is at home going, that's my wife, uh, you know? Now, they were married at this time, I think they, yeah. Anyway, next we have best match of the night, Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero. Best match tonight, even though the finish was kind of screwy. I'm going to think of it. The only, there are only two matches that had... Uh, there's seven matches on the show tonight. Okay? And three of them had screwy finishes. The Edge, Benoit match. Um, the This match and then the main event. Um, now this was good. Lots of back and forths. You could tell these two had great chemistry together. Eddie Guerrero. Now... So, we think, so the, the beginning of this was Edge versus Chris Benoit. Both baby faces, but it worked. Here, both heels. But they were cheering Kurt over Eddie. Because Eddie was more so a heel. But Kurt was obviously still heel-ish. And would be a heel after this. So, I don't know. But they traded a lot of back and forth things. Angle slam reversed into a German suplex. And Eddie going up for a frog splash, but getting reversed. And so much. Go out of your way to go watch this match. If you're not going to watch the whole show, watch this match. It is, it is great. But it ends when um, Chavo Guerrero gets involved. And Kurt Angle disposes of him. But then the referee is distracted. Right? Kurt Angle goes back to deal with Eddie. Here comes Chris Benoit. Boom. Bops uh, Kurt Angle in the head with the title. And Guerrero frog splash. One, two, three. And then, of course, you get the reversal before, but this goes more. Uh, Kurt Angle was looking for Chris Benoit now at the party. And this leads to a brawl at the party, which, which ends with uh, Kurt Angle going to hit the angle slam on Chris Benoit. But while he's doing that, Benoit grabs a bottle, bashes it on his head, and they both go through the table. And they even replay the bottle shot, because they're still hitting something. He said that. But yeah, he hit. Great. The main event, Rey Mysterio versus Brock Lesnar. Double double E champion Brock Lesnar. You knew something was gonna happen. This match was okay. You know, I'll tell you this. Rey Mysterio is a smart little motherfucker. Okay, let me tell you, he's a smart little guy. Because he's going before the match even starts, Rey Mysterio just jumps out at him, hitting him, running around, 
hits the leg drop on Brock as he's getting in the ring, and then the bell rings, and then he's just running around trying to. He's smart. He's not letting Brock. He's not staying still. He's not letting Brock get him. He's very smart. Brock does eventually get him, manhandles him, and they keep making way. You know, he can't do this to the Big Show, go. No, he's 175 pounds. He can do this to the Big Show. We know that, Taz. We know he's not be able to do manhandle it because he just like <laughs> picks him up like he's like this, like <laughs> like this, like it's nothing. You know. Is this leaking? I feel like it's leaking. Hold on. It's the second bottle of this to do that to me. Either it's leaking or it's dripping. But, um... Look, it dripped on the freaking... This notebook has been dripped on by so much... Doesn't seem to be. Maybe it's just dripping or something. I don't know. Doesn't seem to be. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Don't ruin the phone. So, yeah. Eventually, Brock does get the advantage. But, yeah, he takes uh, Remy Strayer and just whaps him into the, the ring post. Hurts his arm. Mysterio's arm. And then Big Show comes out, interrupts the match, grabs Rey Mysterio and just chucks him into the crowd. Bell goes off. He and Lesnar fight. And the show goes off the air. I think I think uh, Big Show got the advantage here. So it's showing Big Show, you know. Tough. And then they like, well, maybe, maybe Paul Heyman is right. Maybe Brock Lesnar can't beat Big Show. Spoiler alert. Again, look away. He doesn't. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a pretty good show. This is a solid show. Um, I think this is the last of the Halloween episodes. I going to check out an episode of Two Guys and a Girl. It's called The Satanic Curse. It aired around Halloween time, but much like Boy Meets World, it might just be a horror-centric episode, which I can still cover because it is October. So, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on this episode of SmackDown? Leave a comment below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.